This video will demonstrate how your CSS file integrates with your HTML files for your website. So first I want to show you that your root folder um, for your website is called Granny's Cookies. This is the folder that should have all of the pages for your site. Make sure that you don't have any extra files in here. All of your .zip files that you use for uploading should be deleted. They don't need to be saved. So in here I have my images folder with all of the images for my site in it, the index.html, which is our home page, and then our other pages of our site. Remember the naming convention should always be lowercase letters using a dash to separate the words, and then our style.css, which is our CSS style sheet. It doesn't really matter what you call your style sheet. Some people are using styles.css, you can have global.css, main.css. The main thing is whatever you call your style sheet, that's what you need to make sure you link to from each of the pages of your site. So I'm going to open up brackets. And I've displayed this in a vertical split because I want you to be able to see my CSS file so here's my style.css, and then right now um, we'll start with the, the index page. And so on the left-hand side, I have my style sheet, and on the right-hand side, I've opened up each of my Granny Cookies pages. So you'll have one style sheet that connects to each of your HTML pages using this link. So that should be in the head of each of your pages. The style sheet starts with the box sizing using the universal selector, and then I have each of the styles that I've created for my site. The couple of things that I want to make sure we go over is that each of these styles should have a corresponding reference in your HTML page. So for example, I have a body element tag, and so because I have this body tag, I can style it using the element selector. And that means any style that I put in here will affect all of the content that's within this body tag. And so that's called an element selector because I'm actually choosing my element tag name. So the same with the header. So if I have a header, I have a style for my header, then that's what is going to display um, on the HTML. And so you'll notice here, remember that we talked about specificity and inheritance. And so the CSS will read from top to bottom. And so it'll take whatever you have at the top and apply it. If you change something with the same name, then it will change it. It's going to take whatever style was put in last. So in this example, I have header, nav, and footer all with the background color of steel, light steel blue. And that's just so I don't have to recreate the background color in each of these elements. And so um, the other thing that that makes that easy to do is if I decide I want to change my background color, I only have to change it in this one place. I don't have to change it everywhere. And because I've duplicated this element name, so header has this background color, but all of these properties are different. So these properties are just going to be added on to what was already added for the header. So these are elements that you don't have any tags or any, you know, um, angle brackets in here. You just have the actual element name. In this example, I've used an ID. So I'm saying that if I have an ID called home, and the reason I know it's an ID is because it uses the hashtag, inside a paragraph, then it's going to accept these styles. And so that's what we used inside the navigation. So my granny's cookies, because I want the header text to look different than all the other texts of my page, I've used this ID home. It's the only ID on the page called home and it's going to have these styles. If you create a class, a class means you've used the dot. 
And so in this case, I have a class called column main. This is not going to affect anything on my page unless I actually apply the class. And so if we look at our services page, So in our sections, I used these class names. I used columns 50 and services. So that means I need to have styles for these. And so if we look in our CSS, I do have a class called columns 50. And so it's going to display inline block, float left, use a justify text align, and have a right margin of 10 pixels. And then I made this width 48%. And so that class is applied to this section because I actually said class equals column 50. Then I also created a second class called services. And that is here. So it's just dot services and I gave it a different background color and a border radius of 20 pixels. And so here, if we look, this class is in this section, right? So as soon as it's in a section, it's going to have all of the properties of the section, but because it has the additional class called services added, it's going to have the border radius added where other sections won't have it. And the background color is going to change. So my section has a background color of light gray, but because when I apply this class, that's going to supersede that. And now it's going to have a color of light goldenrod. Some of you did create sections, um, like for the cookie page. And so here I have a section um, class columns 30. So I wanted each one of these to be um, one third of the page. You don't have to create a separate class for every section on your page. If it's going to have the same style, you just reuse that class name. So anywhere I put the class of columns 30, it's going to take the style. So this is my class of columns 30. These properties are the same, whether it's the 50% or the one third. But the thing that's different is using a different width. And so again, on my columns 50, I made it 48% just so it would fit in with the margins. And then the same with my columns that I wanted one third, instead of using 33%, I used 30%. So this is just an example, a little bit of how you're gonna use your elements, your classes and your IDs to style. You create the style one time in the style sheet, and then you use those styles, either the element name, the class name, or the ID within your HTML pages.